Hi everybody, so I'm back again inside. It's really, really hot out today. It was actually 64 this morning when I woke up. And um, a couple hours later, I decided to go in the front yard and work on my parents' uh, well, front yard. <laughs> um, I had to trim some bushes and uh, sweep and all this other stuff that goes along with, you know, keeping things tidy in the garden, in the front yard. Um, but basically, um, it was pretty decent out this morning when I went out there. I think it was like 75 or something like that. And right now it's like uh, 90, 92. So it went up uh, a whole lot today. And that's okay. At least I got some um, exercise in. But I'm going to go on to movies again, like I usually do. And I want to talk about uh, this article that I read from the No Film School website. It's for, like, independent filmmakers mostly and for, you know, other movie stars and directors. So they were talking about Taylor Swift's new uh, concert film that uh, was going to be released through AMC Theaters, uh, I think the first week of October. I don't know how that goes, but um, I think it's October 6th, or is it October 13th? I'm not for sure, so you're going to have to check it out. Check it out. Um, but um, what really, like, irks me a little bit about uh, this whole, like, being supportive of celebrities, making their own stuff with their own money. Like, great. But it doesn't really happen all the time, right? I know I've probably talked it about it in the past and how, you know, these celebrities who keep on saying, oh yeah, well, studios and executives and streamers don't want to make my movies. And like I was talking about, you know, um, yesterday's bit about Me Too guys being, uh, not finding financing for their movies. And it's just like, well, you're a multimillionaire. I think you could, you know, pretty much handle it and finance your own shit. And maybe if you lose a whole lot of money other than your investor's money, because that's what usually happens for independent movies. But there's always been, like... I would have to say this whole entire uh, notion that celebrities have to have pretty much everything given to them for um, their particular projects that they want to make, but yet they're rich as it is. So what I don't understand is, is that why aren't they financing their, their movies and other stuff that they want to get off the ground? Now, this is very similar to the Taylor Swift situation. So, I read completely yesterday from No Film School website that Taylor Swift basically financed a concert show since uh, probably she thought that there were other people that probably couldn't go because it is very expensive for, you know, concerts. And, you know, I think costs to like a couple hundred dollars to even thousands of dollars. So maybe the she thought of that as like to support, you know, other people who couldn't really go to her concert, which is great. I think that's, you know, very down to earth and very humble of herself to do. But get this, she financed this concert film um, after talking with her parents who are also her business managers. So... They made the concert film for about 10 to $20 million, right? And I don't think she directed it I, that I'm, I'm aware of. But so far, it has reaped in like almost $27 million in pre-ticket sales, which is pretty good because it really like crushed the AMC movie theater's website, corporate website. So... Taylor Swift and her parents and her other reps um, 
basically contacted AMC CEO Adam Aaron, basically saying that they want to uh, self-distribute her movie through that particular um, movie theater complex, including Regal Cinemas. Now, it hasn't been said about Regal Cinemas, you know, uh, partnering up with AMC. I don't know if she called them too, uh, but yeah. So she financed this concert movie for 10 to 20 million dollars of her own money, which is pretty good, you know. Um, but 10 to, you know, 20 million dollars for a concert movie is just like, usually it's like 5 million dollars, but I don't know why. Um, I don't really get it. Maybe she had to pay for other people and, uh, they were still doing the tour and paying for other stuff. So I can really understand why it would go up to that much money, but it's looking pretty good for her because she could get up to like 70 or, uh, quite potentially a hundred million dollars and you know this website was like going into the fact that independent filmmakers should look up to her and it's just like for one thing yes that's great that she's able to do that but remember when i was talking about yesterday how studios and other independent filmmakers and producer producers were sort of like pissed off that they were willing to showcase her movie but not the movie that goes through the amc independent um i guess search engine where uh independent filmmakers can submit their movies through because maybe they can't find distribution and they just want to do self-distribution themselves but i don't get like why this like ass kissing like sort of like celebrity articles about, you know, Taylor Swift financing her own stuff. I mean, she's, yeah, a grown-ass woman, and that's great that she's doing it because that basically proves all these other celebrities that are like, oh, I can't get sh shit made or whatever. But here's someone who, um, like, all her previous movies have been box office failures, so it's a good thing for her to basically not go to the studios or streamers and just release it on her own terms. I mean, that's great. I really do support that. But I really can't stand when these articles are, like, so, like, ass-kissing. This isn't to say that Taylor Swift is, you know, uh, is being elitist or any type of way. I'm not accusing her of anything, but I just feel like these... Uh, entertainment websites, including, like, film industry websites, are, like, so, like, ass-kissing her all the time, saying what she's doing is that she's, you know, um, trying to help independent filmmakers, and I'm just like, no, she's not really helping independent filmmakers. She also wants to direct her own movies, too, right? So, why isn't she doing that? Why is she going to Fox Searchlight? When she could have been, like, financing her own shit, like, sh like she's doing now. She keeps on saying, I remember last year when they were talking about her, uh, with her first, like, short film, and it was during, like, Oscar season, and it was just really, really aw awkward that Variety would just, like, basically kiss her ass because she got into, like, Toronto Film Festival with, I think, Sadie Silk, or Sink, however you pronounce her name. But, um, of course, you know, they were flattering her with Oscars and all this other shit. But she's already going to make a movie through Fox Searchlight. So, why isn't she doing that? Why is she just relying on, like, AMC and all these other movie theaters that sh her reps could basically call to and say, hey, we want these amount of uh, uh, theaters. I think AMC is getting 47% while she's getting 53%. I don't know about the other percentages. Um, I forgot about that particular article. But that's the thing about all these celebrities is that, you know, 
we constantly, they constantly have to kiss their ass all the time about certain things. And, you know, it's great to see that Taylor Swift is, you know, taking charge of her career, you know, uh, and everything like that. But I just feel like, you know, this has been done before. Like, several times over, you know, uh, many decades. Like, including, like, Cassavetes and um, other people. But she's already, like, a famous, you know, singer and, like, a movie star. And now she's becoming a director. And, look, that's great for her. But it's just, like, if she could fund her own concert film... Whatever she's making with this particular uh, AMC release. So, I feel like she could have been doing that to her new movies instead of going through Fox Searchlight. So, why are these celebrities, like, if they're funding their own stuff, then why are they going to the studios and streamers to get their shit made? Like... I I just don't understand that, and that's why people are talking about the privilege and the elitist, you know, stuff, and I feel like I see this all the time with, you know, other A-list superstars who have, you know, mega bucks. to be honest, because they don't, like, actually know how to use it properly in order to make their own stuff. And then they say, oh yeah, I had to wait 20 to 40 years to make my movie. And the studios wouldn't make it, so I went to Netflix and all this other shit. Like, I see all these A-list, you know, superstar actors and actresses, you know, constantly complain that they can't, they couldn't get shit made. And it's just like, well, you do have your own money in ATM card or credit card or whatever the fuck you use. But it's just like... And also, you know, for actresses who basically complain about the sexism, racism, all this other shit, even other filmmakers like Spike Lee, and and it's just like, you're rich already due to your, you know, um, wonderful career that you already have. So, why are these studios and streamers working with them constantly and giving them money all the time? And... It's still because they're famous movie stars. And I feel like even attracting uh, famous producers like, you know, Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, and all this other stuff. And it's just like, hold on. I mean, that's great that they did that, you know, to make movies. However, I feel like, you know... There's this, like, constant, like, ass-kissing, like, articles when it comes to, like, making movies. And if Taylor Swift and Kevin Costner and all these other people, all these other big wood filmmakers, it's, like, similar to, like, Zach Braff and Spike Lee going on Kickstarter and asking for, like, a million dollars, even though that they have that type of money. And their bank account. Like, multiple millions of dollars. But it's just like, Taylor Swift could actually make her own shit. And just like all these other actors and actresses, instead of complaining all the time about the studio system and the streamers and all this other stuff, how they're not being respected, and yet they get their, you know, movies, TV shows, get made all the time. So... I don't really, like, quite understand the big deal or, like, the certain aspect of being respected by their peers. And it's just, like, you know, I don't know if it's, like, part of their image or uh, whatever. But it's just, like, why isn't Taylor Swift, you know, making her own stuff with her own money? Like, that also includes movies. Because I think she also finances some of her own uh, music videos. I don't know if that's true or not, because I'm not a part of that, you know, t typical aspect of the music industry. I don't know how that works. So, that's the thing. And that's what I was saying yesterday, or the previous video of how David Fincher can basically make 
the killer for like, I don't know, say a million dollars or, you know, make it for 17 million dollars. But it's just like, why aren't these, you know, famous filmmakers and actors and actresses, you know, and producers, you know, making their own shit with their own money? Like, I just don't quite understand. I mean, look at the Polanski issue that I was talking about yesterday when, you know, the Italian producer is just like, oh, yeah, well, streamers are, you know, why couldn't they just finance his movie even though that... He has his previous movies on there, collecting millions of dollars, and it's just like, oh yeah, I don't think they're going to get involved with this Me Too aspect or, you know, controversy anymore. But it's just like, um, Polanski is a grown-ass man, and he's a millionaire, so he could self-fund his own shit. If he feels like the uh, entertainment industry is failing him, or whatever. No, it's because of his own criminal allegations that where he hasn't been actually tried in a court out in LA and I don't know if there will ever be a verdict at all because sure his victim has said oh yeah I I forgive him and all this other stuff but when you deal with the law that's way beyond different so here's the thing uh he got investors for his late latest movie for like 22 million dollars for a fucking hotel movie drama movie whatever it's called and now it's getting uh bad reviews so i don't know what's gonna happen if it's gonna find distribution but he certainly has that type of money to self-release it just like taylor swift does you know, she has, you know, social media accounts and she could just go ahead and, you know, tell her friend, fans to go out and see it and all this other type of stuff, you know? All right, I'm going to move on from the plan ski bit and go back to Taylor Swift because, um, yeah. But, you know, and also, why aren't these celebrities, if they have such such like uh image like lifestyles or materialism or however you want to call it this power of celebrity why aren't they like creating despite having allegations of certain things but it's just sort of like if you look at taylor swift she's the perfect candidate because nobody's gonna bother her because she just makes her own shit. She makes her own music. She, she makes her own, you know, films if she wanted to. But why is she going to Fox Searchlight for this um, new movie that she could potentially direct? And it's just like, I mean, it would be considered hers, just like this concert movie. So I don't know what's going to happen if um, after the movie's done... Like, uh, how is she going to release it and stuff like that? I mean, she certainly has the fucking money for that. But it's just like, I constantly hear of this crap from, you know, actresses all the time. Oh, um, people didn't want to make it, so I just went to the streamers. Well, of course you did. Because you already have a relationship with, you know, these studio executives from, you know, Big Budget Studios and the streamers, and it's just like, well, yeah, you're best pals with them. Of course you're going to get through that door and constantly complain about, oh, yeah, well, you know, nobody wants to make my movie and all this other stuff. And, you know, it's like, but you're rich. You could still make your own uh, movies if you so do desire. Like, you can actually make it and release it yourself like John Cassavetes did. Now, John did that with way beyond lower budgets. Like, say, below 60 grand of his own money that he got from acting gigs. Because he was still an actor. Despite, you know, him working on other movies with his other filmmaking friends and actor friends. 
But he was also making personal movies that he wanted to, you know, see. And, you know, of course, putting Gina Rollins in those particular movies. So it's just like, why aren't they um, doing that? Why aren't they, these stars, you know, creating on their own terms and applying the uh, do-it-yourself movements? Like, um... It's sort of like very, very odd that they would do that. It's like, like I said before, they're so used to being catered to all the time. Like all these actors and filmmakers and actresses. And it's just like, well, if you're sick and tired of it, then why are you complaining? Because you're going to get it anyways. You're just going to wait and wait and wait and say, oh yeah, I couldn't get it made. I mean, it's just such utter bullshit. It's whiny pussy crap that nobody wants to, you know, uh, talk to them about. It's like, just grow the fuck up. Like, make shit on your own. Like, if Jeff Bezos decided to bankroll, like, his own particular movies that he wants to make, but he doesn't know how to make them, like, at all. And none of these, like, uh, actors know the other side of financing. They just know how to, you know, appeal to, you know, their investors because they're a famous movie star. And you have to give them what they want. And it's like, that's so beyond stupid. It's like, grow up and finance your own shit. And... Find a uh, distribution company willing to release it. Or just go straight to the movie theaters. You don't have to worry about the Paramount degrees or whatever. So, that's another way. And, you know, Taylor Swift also doesn't have an excuse to go to Fox Searchlight. Because, you know, another filmmaker who might be an up-and-comer who doesn't have millions of dollars could have used that certain slot. But she had to take it. So, just like, I hate it when these CEOs say, Oh yeah, we'll work with first-time directors. No, no they won't. No they won't. Because this usually happens all the fucking time. And they rather work with, you know, famous movie stars or singers or whoever else. Who's gonna, you know, make a movie for them? Why? Because it sells tickets. Their face, their noticeability to audiences worldwide is what sells movie tickets. I totally get that. But these studios and streamers who constantly complain of like, oh yeah, we can't find, you know, um, unknown filmmakers. I think they must be busy. And that's another lie. That's such utter bullshit, too. So, um, yeah. But I just don't like these, like, film reporters who, like, uh, kiss people's asses all the time, particularly these celebrities that they're trying to appeal to. Like, it's just very, very stupid. And it's just like, you're talking to someone who basically has either 200 to 400 million dollars uh, in their bank account, or even up to billions of dollars, because they're also getting into, uh, fashion, other merchandise, and, like, food, or wine, or all this other shit. So, they're still being paid a whole lot of money, and they could still make a movie through their own money. But they just don't understand that, like, at all. And that's the certain aspect that I really hate about this particular industry. And that's the reason why people come out and say privilege and elitism and all that type of shit. And that's the reason why. It's like, if you're a grown-ass adult, then you should pay for everything on your own terms. And that's what I'm trying to say. Because, you know, it's really hard for me to go up to a person or to investors and say, hey, I want you to believe in me and make my movie for me. Oh, sorry, I don't know you. 
But we have a meeting with Taylor Swift, so we rather talk to her because she might have great ideas. Adios. You know? And that's the thing. Like I said, I have nothing against Taylor Swift. I just believe that if she's going to big roll this, you know, concert movie that she did for 10 to $20 million, I think that's pretty good for her. But, yeah, she's also self-distributing. So, she's making a whole lot more money than um, uh, what they're saying as of right now. Um, of course, I don't know what's going to happen in October. But, that's... That's the thing about it, is that I just wish that, you know, um, studios and streamers would be more supportive of upcoming filmmakers and actors, but they're not. They're gonna keep, uh, hiring the same ass people over and over again, and, you know, give the first time directing gig to a famous superstar actor or actress, or quite possibly singer. So, really, it's, you know, just really dumb. So... Um, and another thing, if they say that they don't have that type of money to bankroll their movies, um, you can sell those Birkin purses for like $200,000 each of them that you have in your closet. That also includes, you know, these actors that have very established sneakers and they could probably sell for, I don't know, tens of thousands of dollars. So... That's like their own rich Indiegogo uh, filmmaking, crowdfunding thing that they could quite possibly do. But, you know, they're going to find another way and um, whatever that is, you know, fuck over other people. Um, not saying that that doesn't happen, but I'm just saying it probably is happening since it's a cutthroat industry. So, yeah. And that's the reason why a lot of, like, these upcoming filmmakers, including myself, can't find, you know, investors willing to invest in us. Because how do we appeal to a bunch of rich people when we don't have that type of money to basically cater to them? So, that's the thing. Is that you try everything and, um try to find financing for your movies and it doesn't work out. But to see all these rich people or even people who have been accused of, you know, uh, very severe crimes, then why aren't they bankrolling their own fucking shit, like, of a movie? Because if they start losing money, then that's their problem. But I feel like, like I said before, these studios and streamers are kissing all these A-listers, you know, ass all the time. Including, like, these entertainment film industry websites that I keep on talking about. Because that's the thing. It's never going to happen for, you know, um, upcoming filmmakers. Like, they have to wait until, like, they're 40 or 50. Oh, yeah. And then you're, like, 75 and you work on your second movie. Like, it's just never going to happen. And that's why the inclusion problem that I was talking about yesterday is definitely a, you know, kicker to this. So, it's just never going to happen. But at the same time, you know, there's nothing wrong with self-financing your own stuff. And there's nothing wrong to, you know, ask other people if they can help too. But it just becomes really, really hard, especially to me, when people have to deal with other, you know... Um, life consequences all the time because they don't have that type of money. And even people have said, oh yeah, you know, crowdfunding could just basically go away one day because um, we're just crowdfunding, you know, the wrong things at the wrong time. And it's just like, well, you can't really stop people from funding shitty prod projects at all. Like, you can't. Because everybody's trying to start out trying to uh, invest in something that they believe in. Some type of product or movie or whatever else. But it's very noticeable. And I understand why. But they need to start with, you know, trying to ask for like a million dollars or whatever. This is 
start like very, very small and then grow each time. And ask for more money each time on crowdfunding platforms. But to see even like movie stars use crowdfunding uh, to fund their movies is also ridiculous. Unless, you know, it's really a not big of a star, then I can understand why, you know? But here's the thing. Like I said, I'm not a hater against Taylor Swift. I think what she's doing is great. However, she could, you know, actually fund her own shit if she wants to, especially her movies that she wants to direct. Because let me just say there's a lot of actors and actresses that would love to be a part of her movie. Because she definitely has that type of money to, you know, hire them. But I don't think, you know, she's going to make a movie for, like, over a hundred million dollars. Because that would be, like, you know, foolish craziness. But sometimes these filmmakers or, like, these actors, they never actually try to finance their own shit instead of, you know, waiting for so many years to make movies. So, I think that's the problem. And that also includes, like, these actors and actresses asking for private equity. Because, really, that's also not your money either. Unless you put forth your own money within that, you know, private equity. Then I can quite possibly understand that but it's like it's very noticeable and is in some ways privileged because why are you asking people to fund your own shit when you're already a mega mo movie star with millions of dollars and a fan following and that's the thing that they were talking about because there is a website called AMC Independent where, you know, independent filmmakers can release their independent movies on. And it takes about, like, uh, a month and a half to put it through. But, yeah, if you're famous, you could just call the CEO and say, well, I want my movie or, you know, documentary to be released through AMC theaters. Then they can do that. They have that type of power. They also have lawyers and other reps, too. So, I don't get, you know, that other understanding of it. So, it's like, for them to keep on, you know, whining and complaining and bitching and moaning about all these things of not being liked or for, for whatever reason, like, you're always going to have haters. You're also going to have to deal with people who, um are basically accused of, like, really severe criminal allegations. But, yeah, let's keep funding their shit. Like, let's even, uh, give them more money to give. Like, that's stupid. That's for them to, you know, figure out. Because sooner than later, they're going to start losing money themselves. These investors I'm talking about. Because that could quite possibly happen. Because it seems like they're not really understanding of how um, this particular movie that they might be financing regarding a, you know, a controversial filmmaker or actor or whoever is involved. And it's just like, so what? You believed in it. And if you lost money, then that's your fault. But it's also time for these filmmakers and actors and actresses to really, you know, understand that these studios and streamers, like I was saying earlier, could kaput and, like, disappear uh, regarding, like, the implosion of big budget movies. And that could quite possibly happen with not only, you know, these studios, but also these streamers. So... And also, um, that could happen. So, what are these people going to do? Whine and complain even fucking more? Or are they just going to go out and make shit? But the reason why is because they still want to have movie stars in their movie. So, with movie stars, they want bigger salaries. 
And that's the only way. And like I said, there's a lot of, like, A-list actors that don't even try, like, independent movies anymore. And that's what's happening in the industry. Or sometimes they'll go on, like, uh, a streamer movie and, you know, other types of shit. Like, what's happening with Leo DiCaprio with, you know, Don't Look Up and, you know, Killers of Flower Moon. But Killers of Flower Moon was going to have to be on, you know, Apple until they decide to, you know, change their minds and keep it worldwide theatrical distribution because Leo DiCaprio is definitely a name uh, within the industry because he attracts audiences because he's a great actor and he is. But <clears throat> I'm just saying that, you know, these filmmakers and actors, you know, it's just going to get to the point of like, if these studios and streamers start having problems with not retaining their money back for these uh, huge budgets, then it's going to be really, really bad for the um, studios and streamers. Like, they could end up failing and losing a ton of money and more layoffs. So, are they going to still bitch and complain even more after that? But it seems like they still are. Because, I mean, that's what's happening. Like, if you have that money, then you can certainly make these type of movies on your own terms. So, that's my problem with uh, a lot of these, like, celebrities and filmmakers and all these famous people. And, you know, like, these two executives also have no... Um, basic understanding of how people are trying to get up in the industry. Of course, that usually happens all the time in any type of industry. But that's the thing. They're going to just cater to the same ass people over and over again and hire them and whatever, whatever else. But they're not willing to take that particular shot of like at least trying to uh, self-fund their own stuff. So that's the reason why. And, you know, quite frankly, it's also embarrassing for themselves to keep on complaining about the dumbest shit that they could basically finance and bankroll on their own terms. Like, that's the thing. Is that, why is, why is it always the guys and sometimes the girls that do that? Like, I mostly hear it from the guys all the time. And, you know, sometimes through the women. And it just really bothers me. Like, nobody owes you a single fucking thing. So, if you got a leg up in this freaking industry through them, then you're going to have that type of friendship with them. So, you're going to get shit, shit made regardless. But it's just really, like, um, bothers me. Of course, it always has bothered me. But you also have a luxury lifestyle that you also had to keep up with. And it's just like, uh, so which is more important to go to that, uh, tropical island during the summertime or the wintertime? Or would you save that type of money to make a movie? Because you see other celebrities and other people do, do that as well. Like, it's just never going to happen. That's their image. Or some type of Hollywood cultural thing regarding, like, materialism. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not saying rich people are bad. It's just that, why can't you just fund your own shit? And make it. Like, that's all I'm trying to say. Especially these people who are, you know, accused of um, allegations or crimes or whatever. That there hasn't been an actual verdict in. So why are they still working? Why are they still getting investors to invest in them when the average filmmaker who's still struggling, uh, probably coming from a probably stricken, you know, background, and they can't get into the rooms. But they have a certain, you know, a uh, story that they want to tell. And it's also based on appearance. 
And most of the times, you know, these investors cater to people who make money constantly because these investors also want to keep up their, you know, image as well. Like, that's the thing. And, you know, um, image, uh, people's body types, all this other stuff, race, gender, whatever. But that's the thing, is that they're not willing to, uh, at least try newer people. Like, you could give a first-time filmmaker like myself on her a grant, and I, I would be happy, but it's just never gonna happen. Because I would have to figure out my first movie on a lower budget than that. And I don't even have that type of money at all. Because of my daily life. I had to keep a living too. So, what do I do? I tried everything. Sure, I've tried, you know, uh, doing crowdfunding. Didn't work out. Because, you know, my credit card wasn't working. So, I've tried, you know, even years before the pandemic of, like, you know, trying to get rich relatives. But the only problem is, is that they were going through a lot at, in their own personal lives. Of course, I don't want to talk about that because that's their, you know, personal stuff. And I don't feel like, you know, announcing it to the world. But they were going through, you know, divorces and... Having babies, having kids, and, you know, taking care of them, and, you know, just going through a whole lot. But that's the thing, is that they're not willing to sacrifice their own money for something that they want to do. Like, look at Ethan Hawke. He made his first movie, I think, for $500 or something. And it was basically a couple people including himself starring in that particular movie. Now, I don't know if he still bankrolls his own movies, and that's probably not even true. But why aren't these, you know, actors and filmmakers still doing that, despite, you know, their beginnings in this industry? Why aren't they doing that? It's just such an interesting question that should be asked. Why aren't they, you know, creating stuff on their own if these studios and streamers don't want to make it? Then they had to wait 10 to 40 years to get their passion projects made. And that's just stupid. Even investors, you know, drop out. I, I hear that a lot through other independent filmmakers. Even the well-established ones. Oh yeah, you know, the investors decide to, you know drop out for some unknown reason. Like, and they also don't even have that type of money to keep funding their projects. So they go straight to these investors all the time. And, you know, the investors can, like, get out any time that they want to. And that's not really good. So if these celebrities are going through that, or these filmmakers are also going through that, then why aren't they, you know, financing it on their own terms? Regular people can't do that type of shit at all. Why? Because we don't have that type of money. It's the truth. So whenever I hear rich people say, oh, well, you know, I think these certain producers who are accused of crimes are trying to get back into the industry, and it's just like... Well, they could start big rolling their own shit if they're so tired of the Me Too movements and all this other stuff. But it's just like, once they start making stuff on their own, then they're going to be held liable for whatever happens to that particular money that they put through. So, and also, distributors, investors, streamers, and studios, you know, they could give you know, two fucks about anybody else. They just want to make money. It's part of the business. You have to understand that as well. They also don't want to get involved in controversy, but sometimes they do invite it. That's up to them. 
And also, it just really depends on who wants to be, you know, cast in a certain movie or direct a certain movie. So they're so tired of this constant bullshit with the industry uh, pertaining to Me Too or Time's Up or whatever the fuck. But, you know, that's the thing. Why aren't they doing that? I mean, they are a grown-ass man. So, it's just completely bothersome to me. So, I think it's time for people just to grow the fuck up and get over themselves. But, going back to uh, Taylor Swift's film, is that she's going to rake in a whole lot of money. Definitely for the movie theaters. And pertaining to, like, uh, like the Sound of Freedom controversy... And no, I haven't seen that movie either. So, I mean, it does look pretty interesting, but I'm not really interested in it. Why? Because I don't have that type of money to go to the movie theater. But that's the thing. It, it gets really incredibly expensive to go to a movie theater. So if people want to go see something, then let them go see it. But to censorship it is utterly ridiculous. Or... If people don't want to go and the movie suffers and it's by, you know, controversial people in it, then that's their own damn fault. Nobody else's. Other than, you know, them. But what can I do about it? Pretty much nothing. I'm just, you know, stating my opinion. But that's the thing. To, you know, keep funding these people's uh, stuff is also ridiculous. It's similar to the union strikes. Oh yeah, we had to pay for travel. We had to pay for all this stuff. Even studios and streamers pay for the travel of these movie stars. Because of the union. And it's just like, um, these are grown-ass people that sign up for this particular role and sign contracts. So, they had that type of money to basically travel on their own dime. So, why are you wasting that sort of money? That also deals with studio executives. Because they have, you know, perks and all that type of stuff. Like, with private jets and uh, first class tickets. Um, whatever else that they get. And it's just like, um, aren't they, you know, adults? Why do they need to do that? I mean, that's just really, really stupid. I also read something about the Weinstein Company doing the same thing with these these stars that they hired, including, you know, filmmakers, producers, and even their own investors and shareholders. And it's just like, no. Because that becomes such a waste of money, time, and energy. Because it's just stupid. That's what happened to Calico, you know, pictures regarding... Uh, that Cutthroat Island movie. People were saying, oh yeah, it's gonna be a dud or whatever. They already filed for bankruptcy right before the movie actually released. And then people started shit-talking it. Like, saying it was a complete, utter failure. And I'm just like, they filed for bankruptcy because they were also funding the lifestyles of all these stars so they could attach them to these projects that had over... 50 to 100 million dollars to get made. So, that also really needs to stop too. Especially when it comes to these studios and streamers, or they're going to end up losing a whole lot more. But they're laying off people who are basically working there and not getting paid a whole lot. But hey, let's give, you know, this star, you know, a private jet and all this other all these other perks, including the executives, and I'm just like, but they're grown-ass adults. Like, why do they need to do that? That also includes, like, Taylor Swift. You know, these uh, 20th century searchlight shouldn't be, you know, bankrolling her next movie. If she can do this concert movie, uh, then she can make her first movie already by now. But that's the thing. Look at John Cassavetes. He wasn't like a major huge star. I mean, he was back then, but he wasn't like noticeable to a whole lot of people because he was basically the husband of Gina Rollins. 
And he basically bankrolled his own stuff for like 60 grand. And uh, he wasn't clearly an established star. But he just wants to become a filmmaker more often than being an actor. So I kind of do respect what he did and what she did and how they weren't afraid of, you know, any type of pressure or interference what whatsoever from anybody. They also uh, released their own movies by themselves, you know? And he also did, I think, late night marketing that you tend to see with other celebrities when they do promotion for other movies. And sometimes I do see that with, you know, independent movies. There's even some actors and actresses that will even promote movies, especially independent ones. Like, they're not being paid a whole lot of money for these type of movies. So, that's another thing. So, every single time someone complains about some stupid shit that, you know, celebrities, you know, talk about, or, like, you see these certain actors and filmmakers getting, you know, stuff made for, like, over a hundred million dollars is just ridiculous. It it becomes such a waste of money. Even The Killer, you know, that movie com- could have been released through the studio system if David Fincher wasn't so, like, Pompous, just like every other director. I'm not saying that's bad, but it's just like, you know, he is an established director and he has his own money. So he could have made The Killer a long time ago when he first saw it, but he had to wait 20 to 40 years to make it. That's stupid. And also, he made it during COVID, which made it even more expensive. So, why aren't these, like, mostly male stars and filmmakers, you know, making their own stuff? Like, I don't get it. I mean, John Cassavetes just really uh, did these things on his own. He didn't go to anybody about making movies. Because he knew that the studio system wouldn't uh, treat him right. I mean, of course, he did go to, I don't know who it was, for uh, his movie Gloria with Gina Rollins. So, you do respect him for doing that. But he's also a major influence to a whole lot of independent filmmakers that probably do this exact same thing that he does. However, it's getting more complicated over the years because filmmaking is... an is still an expensive endeavor and people don't have, you know, the type of, you know, money that comes with acting roles or regular jobs like he did. But that's the thing. Real life people can't, you know, make these certain movies at all because they're not going to be treated with respect at all. They're going to be made fun of and, uh, other you know, stupid reasons. But, you know, a lot of these stars and filmmakers just really need to grow up and, you know, find another way of trying to find, I mean, fund their own stuff. I mean, you definitely had that type of luxury. I'm sure you're not going to wear that same sweater that you just bought literally today from... A year or two from now. So. Why aren't these celebrities becoming. Like normal people. And just like. Make their own stuff. I don't get it. Like. But anyways. Moving on. I mean. Don't get me wrong. I like. Taylor Swift. I like David Fincher. Like. And. That's all I really have to say about it. But John Cassavetes. Should be the primary example when it comes to making independent movies. But I feel like a lot of these like entertainment websites don't look for people who are unknowns and up, up and comers for, you know, making their own movies with their own money. That's hardly even talked about at all. Why? Because it's not very glamorous. It doesn't involve a celebrity unless they're starring in the movie. 
because that's what usually happens all the time. Like, I also see, you know, um, going back to, like, underrated actresses, so, or, like, horror, you know, film actresses, you know, they're also putting up Patreons and, uh, like, merchandise websites and, you know, um, sort of, like, a GIF, um, of, say, a hundred dollars or more to buy from their personal website so they can contribute to their own projects. And it's just like, and then all of a sudden I see a, a, a picture of them wearing a Gucci belt or like some type of, you know, high priced outfit, luxury item. And it's like, well, that's the reason why you can't make any of your movies. And it's just become so much harder when they're already unionized. And um, now we have to pay them more money up front. So it just really hurts a lot of filmmakers because they can't really find the budgets for these type of movies anymore. Because the investors are going to be like, eh, I don't really give a shit about unionized people unless they're, you know, pretty popular, you know? But that's the thing, is that a lot of these independent movies, probably after the strikes or whenever it, you know, they get together. And, you know, it's just going to end up hurting a whole lot of people who don't even still have that type of money to support them. Like, there's even, you know, filmmakers from my area who are unionized and they can't find jobs in my area. So where are they moving to? Georgia, California. And it's basically the same exact thing. They're not going to get recruited all the time. And, you know, that just happens. And like I said before, I'm not being anti-union either. It just happens all the time where I live. And that's why it gets so incredibly hard because even people are starting to realize that they want to hire unionized, you know, cast and crew because they're so fucking expensive. And they probably don't have that type of budget to support them financially. So, that's the reason why, you know, it's really hard to get independent movies made, especially nowadays, when you're basically a nobody and a up-and-comer. And that's the thing. And I don't really have that type of money to, you know, bankroll my own movies. But to look at these stars and filmmakers constantly complaining about how they can't get their own shit made. And I'm just like, okay, well, you know, you have an ATM card, right? I'm sure you do. But, you know, if you don't want to bankroll your own movies, then why not help someone else? You might have a, you know, interesting idea or whatever, but that's what happens. So it just feels like that's the reason why a lot of shit never gets made potentially on the independent side, because the only way to get it funded is through crowdfunding. And a lot of people don't have that. And I certainly don't have the type of people to help me out for a crowdfunding thing. That's the problem. So, anyways, moving on. Um, oh, I wanted to talk about Cameo. So, I never got another email back. Of course, I've been saying for the past, like, couple of videos. But it's just like, you know, if you're going to tell me that you're interested in it, then why aren't you, you know, uh like, emailing me back. If you were interested in it, then don't email me back at all. I mean, that's really all you have to do. But it's basically the same thing with these Cameo videos. They're asking for so much money. Like, it's ridiculous. That's another thing. Like, but, you know, going back to Cameos is just like, that's the only way that I would be able to, you know, get connections and get support from other people who might be interested in helping me. But that's the only way 
for me to, you know, make a living. I don't have, you know, other filmmaking jobs here in my area. I have no film industry, like I was saying before, multiple times. That's what happens. But, you know, uh, I don't think it's going to work out because I'm not really popular. Or maybe they're investigating it, but I highly doubt it. Because usually, it. I mean, what are they looking at? Like, trying to make sure I'm alive or something? I don't know how that works for this particular site. But, yeah. Anyways, um, have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.